Hey guys, welcome to Stocks and Sauces. So today we're going to talk about sauces. Um, so yesterday we talked about stocks, uh, which is your foundation for your sauces, right? Um, so we have a white stock, a brown stock, and a fish fume. Um, so now we're going to talk about the mother sauces, okay? So there's five mother sauces. There is a hollandaise, a bechamel, an espanol, tomato, and volute. So one way to learn this is Beth V, okay? Beth V, bechamel, espanol, tomato, hollandaise, and V is volute, okay? Now, so a bechamel is a milk sauce. It's a white sauce, okay? It's a milk sauce, and what you do is you make a roux. So let's talk about a thickening agent. So a roux is uh, equal parts of flour and fat by weight that is cooked. So what you do is you'll, you'll take uh, flour uh, and you take clarified butter and you mix it together until you have a peanut butter consistency, okay? So it's gotta be a peanut butter consistency. If it's too runny, um, it won't have the thickening power that you need. Uh, if it's too thick, it will dry out and burn. So uh, you make a roux and then you add your, you have your milk, I always take my milk, put it in a pot, heat it up, and I bring it, once I start to see a little steam, I don't see any movement in my pot, I don't see any simmering or, or anything, um, then I start to add my roux. Now, when you're doing the, cooking the milk, you're gonna add an onion pique. You guys should have looked at what an onion pique is. So it's a, it's a piece of an onion with a bay leaf and a clove stuck to it, okay? Uh, and you put that in there, you let it cook with while you're kind of steeping your milk, if you will. Uh, you add the roux, you thicken it up uh, to a sauce consistency. So what is a sauce consistency? A sauce consistency, think of heavy cream, all right? It's a little thickness. Uh, nappe, it coats the back of the spoon, so I, I dip my, my spoon in, I pull it out, and it should coat my spoon. It shouldn't just drip off where you can't see anything. It should kind of coat it, and I should be able to take my finger and go like this and see the finger, and it's still on the spoon. So that's nappe. We'll demo that when you get into class. Um, so, and then you just season it. You season it with a little bit of salt, white pepper, and a little bit of nutmeg. And that is a bechamel. It's just a milk sauce. It doesn't have a lot of flavor to it, uh, but it's a base. So you take a bechamel and you add Gruyere cheese and Parmesan cheese, and now you have a Mornay sauce. Uh, if you want a cream sauce, you add heavy cream to it. Uh, think of an Alfredo. Alfredo, heavy cream. So I make a bechamel, I add Parmesan cheese, some heavy cream, and boom, I got my bechamel, I got my Alfredo. Um, so it's a base for all your cream sauces, all right? So bechamel, that's your milk sauce, okay? So that is your milk sauce. Um, biggest thing with that is you gotta make sure you don't use high heat. It doesn't, you don't wanna cook it for very long. Um, milk will separate if you boil it long enough. Um, so those are things you gotta be careful with. Uh, you can also make a soubise. A soubise is a sweet onion flavored bechamel. So I sweat onions, um, so I take a little bit of fat and I dice up a bunch of onions and I put it in a pan on a low, low heat and I sweat them for about an hour. And what happens is, is, is the sweetness comes out. And then I mix it with my bechamel and I press it through a chinois, uh, which is your, your fine uh, china cap, right? And I press it through using my ladle and that sweet onion flavor mixes in really well with the bechamel. It's a sweet onion flavored bechamel. Beautiful, beautiful sauce. Love it. All right, so then you have a velouté. Now, a velouté, um, the word screws everybody up. A velouté is a white stock and a roux. That's all it is. It's a white stock and a roux. So you take your stock, uh, usually it's chicken stock. I can use a white veal stock if I want or a fish fumé. Um, and I take that stock and I reduce it. And because if you heat up a stock, um, you always wanna taste it and I promise you, uh, you'll taste the water at, 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 on your tongue and then you'll taste the light chicken or the, light, the veal. The veal is always a little stronger. Anyways, you let that reduce until that chicken is prevalent, right? And then you add a roux and I add a roux to it so that it will give me a little bit of thickener and it will coat. So that is a velouté. It's a reduced stock 
It's, it's a stock and a roux. That's all it is. It's a white stock and a roux. That's all it is. Everybody gets confused on it. Um, so there, we're going to make an almond sauce when you get to class. And an almond sauce is taking, making your, your velouté. And then you add some heavy cream, lemon juice, salt, and white pepper. And it's a creamy chicken lemon flavor. Uh, it's a beautiful sauce for chicken. Love it. Um, and uh, goes really, really well. So that is your velouté. But the velouté, you can do you can make it with a fish fumé. I've done a fish fumé the same way, just using fish stock, um, adding the roux, adding a little bit of cream, adding lemon. Um, the white veal, I can you can do um, the same thing. Uh, and they're great sauces. Um, so it's just kind of looking at those things. Uh, and then they have you know the horseradish, the aurora. The mushroom you can do you can do a mushroom uh, where you do kind of sweat some mushrooms add your stock into it let that cook and that cook that mushroom flavor will come in um, so there, there's a lot of different ways but a velouté you've done it more times than you think because think about if you ever make a soup and you you have a, a, a chicken stock and you do let's say you're sauteing something and you add um, you add uh, some flour, all of a sudden you just made a compound roux, okay? It's not a, it's not your true roux, but it's a compound roux. It's a thickening agent. So I'm, I'm kind of cooking in one pot, if you will. Um, it's the same thing, and you add stock, and you let it cook. Strain off the vegetables, and boom, you have a velouté, right? So um, that's what it is. All right, so then you have, um, uh, with velouté, you have the espanol. So the espanol is your brown sauce. So here, you're always going to make your, your espanol is never going to be served as that sauce. It's, it's always going to go to the next sauce. It's going to go to that next level. Okay. So an espanol here, all we do is you take uh, your rondo, because you always do a big batch of this. There's no little small batch. Um, because it, you're making demi-gloss. So you take your, your Rondo, uh, you add your clarified butter into there, and you cut up your mirepoix, your onions, carrots, celery, and you add it in there. And you don't want big chunks, you want small chunks, right? Because the smaller the chunk on the cooking time, the, the quicker I can get that aromatic, all right? Um, so I caramelize my vegetables, getting them nice and brown, and then I add my flour, I dust it with flour, I sange is to dust with flour, and I make a compound roux in that pot. And then I add tomato paste, and I let it cook for a second um, because I'm caramelizing my tomato paste, and then I add my veal stock, and, I, and I, I whisk it, and I get it all mixed together, and I let that simmer. And usually it all depends if I'm making a gallon or two, you know, it will, um, it usually will take at least an hour to cook, and you taste it. And, you're going to taste this kind of this light veal. You'll taste the aromatics of your uh, vegetables. Uh, you'll taste the veal. The veal will be prevalent. You'll taste a light hint of that tomato. And then the sachet. You'll taste a little bit of your herb. Um, now, it's a great sauce, but it's not finished. Okay? So we take that demi glace, We strain it. I mean, the espanol. We strain it. And then we make a demi glace. So demi means half. Okay? So a demi glace is equal parts of veal stock and espanol. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing two cups of espanol and two cups of veal stock, two gallons and two gallons, it's equal parts. So it's equal parts espanol and veal stock. I put them in a pot and I let them reduce. And I let it reduce by half, okay? So if I do two cups and two cups, that makes a gallon, right? And then I'm gonna literally reduce it to two cups. All right, and that prevalent, now that veal, it's gonna be rich, it's gonna be uh, a nice, rich, caramelized uh, veal flavor. It's so good, I love it. And that's a base that you can use. I do a, um, a blueberry uh, port wine demi. Uh, I can take my demi gloss and put a little uh, rosemary and garlic in there and let it kind of steep a little bit and all of a sudden I have a little rosemary flavor. Um, and then you season it and you mount it. So Monte Aubert means to mount with butter, okay? So you take whole cold butter and you mount it at the end and you whisk it in. You don't let it just throw it in there and let it kind of sit, right? You mount it in and, and it gives it a little shine, it gives it a little richness. 
Um, and But Montel Bear, is, it's a finisher, okay? And it's just whole butter adding in at the end. It means to mount, okay? To mount with butter. So that's on one of your uh, forums. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's your demi gloss. So, um, and then from your demi gloss, you can make a Bordelais. A Bordelais sauce is a red wine demi. A chasseur is called a hunter sauce that has shallots, mushrooms, white wine, um, and tomatoes in it. Very, very good. And you just you add that in. Um, you have you can make a Robert sauce, which is a white wine mustard demi gloss, which is very good. Um, so there's all kinds of sauces you can make with it. Uh, the Marche de Vin, uh, which is another red wine sauce, um, a mushroom sauce, um, the, the, there's the Robert. Yep, yeah, so then you have our tomato sauce. So tomato sauce is just a basic. Um, so, but a classical tomato sauce is using salt pork. And you're taking salt pork and you're rendering. So I talked about rendering um, in a video, and rendering means to melt the fat. So you take the salt pork and you, you cut it really, really small, and you put it in a pot. It's kind of like bacon. Think about bacon. I throw bacon in the pot. I have no grease in it. Let it heat on a, on a low heat, and all of a sudden, five minutes later, the, the fat is melting, and now I have grease in my pot. Same thing. So that's what we're going to render the salt pork, and then we take our uh onions and carrots and we sweat those and then you add your tomatoes your tomato puree you add your sachet of herbs and you let this cook and a little bit of i always put a little sugar because the acid um if you ever have a, a tomato sauce and you you right here you, you eat it and right there you start it's that acid that's from the tomato uh the sugar will help balance it some okay uh so you have that and then you season it at the end. You puree it up and you season it and it's a beautiful sauce. And from there you can make a Creole sauce, a Spanish sauce. Um, I mean, you can really just, it's a marinara sauce, a tomato sauce, it's your basic. If you're one of those, like I'll have students who don't eat pork, so guess what? I look at them and go, then don't run to the pork. Just use um, olive oil or use canola oil. So you can really play with this sauce, okay? Uh, but that's your classical tomato sauce. Uh, and then you have a gastric. A gastric is caramelized sugars, uh, caramelized sugar with vinegar. Um, it's kind of like a sweet and sour. Uh, you can use that with the tomato. I, I do a demi gloss. I use it with my demi, so I'll do a um, I'll do a blueberry gastric uh, demi, and which is beautiful. It it's it's swinging. It's it's swinging. It's banging. It's lo I love it. Um, so you have, so then you have your emulsion. So that's your mother sauces, okay? Oh, I didn't talk about the hollandaise. Um, and the hollandaise is a, um, it's a sauce in its own. It's my favorite. Uh, so it's egg yolks, uh, and you cook it in a, in a water bath, so you kind of protect it. Um, you cook it in a bowl with a little water bath underneath, uh, and you put a little water to help protect it. So eggs coagulate at 140 degrees. Uh, if you add a little water to it or a liquid, uh, it rises up to 155 degrees. So it doesn't coagulate so quickly and you don't have scrambled eggs. So, uh, and again, we're going to demo all these. Uh, you take your egg yolks, you put a little water, you put it over the water bath and you start whisking. All right. And I'm, I always do this. Uh, I do air cooking. <laughs> so I'm whisking, right? And I want to get an eight. And so I'm looking for it to thicken up and get kind of a pale or yellow. And then what I do is I start adding in warm, clarified butter. Uh, and when you're adding that in, you're, you're whisking it, you're drizzling it at the same time because you want to make sure that you get the emulsion, okay? And an emulsion is, is bringing two unmixable liquids together um, and making them stay. All right, so we emulsify this, right? And then we season it up with some lemon, some cayenne, and a little bit of salt. And the biggest thing here is, one, if it gets cold, what happens to the butter? It solidifies. If it gets too ha hot, what happens to the butter? It even melts more and it curdles, curdles my eggs. So you gotta be really, really careful with this. Uh, it's a sauce that you can hold for maybe four hours and that's it. Um, but it's a beautiful sauce and you can turn it into a Bernays sauce where you add a tarragon reduction to it. Uh, you can make a, um, oh geez, it just left me. I see it, I see it, I see it. I add a little tomato to it and it's called a Chiron sauce. 
So a chiron sauce is a Bernay sauce with a little bit of tomato. Um, and so it's like a, a tomato uh, tarragon hollandaise. Woo. But the big thing with a hollandaise, people are like, oh, I don't like it. I'm like, you haven't had a good one yet. Because they're like, oh, it tastes eggy. If it tastes eggy, you add more butter, okay? So secret ratio, one egg yolk holds up to eight ounces of fat, okay? So usually for my uh, hollandaise, I'm using six to eight ounces of fat per yolk. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing a two yolk hollandaise, a 20 yolk hollandaise, I just do the calculation and I go from there. All right, um, so it does, you, don't, you don't want it to taste eggy. Uh, and then the butter cuts, I mean the lemon cuts that fat, so it's a lemon butter uh, sauce. It's so, so good. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Um, if you've ever heard of Eggs Benedict, uh, look it up. It's, it's delicious, it's a great uh, dish. I used to serve uh, Chipotle Eggs Benedict uh, at my hotel and it was 16 bucks a plate. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, so you have, um, so that's your hollandaise. So let's talk about emulsion. So emulsion is a hollandaise, right? It's two unmixable liquids that do not mix. Um, so here you have a temporary, a semi-permanent, and a permanent emulsion, okay? So a uh, temporary emulsion is, think about this. You take oil and vinegar, you pour them together, you shake, 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 and it stays for a second and then psh, it separates, right? That's your, that's a temporary. It, it's not going to hold. A semi-permanent is your hollandaise, okay? So a hollandaise is a semi-permanent. It can separate on you, uh, but it can hold. Um, but think of also, too, a vinaigrette. So a vinaigrette, you can take your, your vinegar or whatever, and you whisk, 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 and you're adding in the oil, and it, it, it will stay a little longer than your, your temporary. Um, but then you have a permanent emulsion, and a permanent emulsion is a mayonnaise. So you guys are going to make homemade mayonnaise when you get here to campus. Um, and what it is, it's an egg yolk in a bowl, you add a little lemon juice, and you whisk, 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 and you whisk it until it gets thick, and then you add your dry ingredients, which is cayenne, uh, dried mustard, a little more lemon juice, a little vinegar, a little bit of salt, and you add all that, you whisk, 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 get it a little thick again, and then you start adding in your oil okay and you're whisking in this oil and you're getting the emul the emulsification and and what did it you're bringing these two together and you see them come together and it starts to get thick all right and it's beautiful um i love i'm not i don't like mayonnaise but a fresh mayonnaise is so much more beautiful and tastes different than the stuff you go buy in the store um so i uh, can't wait for you guys to make it uh, but that's a permanent emulsion, and the permanent means that it's not going to separate. It's not going to come together. It's not going to separate. It stays together. Um, now, another secret. Secret. When I make my vinaigrettes, I add an egg yolk. So I have my vinegar, and I add an egg yolk, and that egg yolk helps to give me a permanent emulsion that it will stay together. So all of a sudden, three days later, I come back, and it's in my refrigerator, and boom! it's still fine so you gotta love those things um, and these are just secrets of the trade okay tricks of the trade woo, woo. Uh, I gotta love it so we ta I talked about a hollandaise a Sharon a Maltese is uh, with blood orange it's a hollandaise with a blood orange uh, Mousseline it's with a hollandaise with Chantilly cream uh, so it kind of it shows you how you to make it and, and you see you're getting that eight uh, and you're cooking it and then you start adding the clarified butter uh, and that's where it's separated. Now, I will tell you this. If you curdle, um, if, you're, if you add the fat too fast, right, you can fix it. It will separate on you, but you can fix it. And you get a bowl, you add a little water, and you start whisking, and, and you bring it boop, into each one into the bowl, and it starts to come together. Um, and that's the trick. We'll teach you that, too, when you're here at school. Um, so Montel Bear, I talked about that. Montel Bear means to mount with butter, okay? And it's a finisher, but also when you're making a beurre blanc, a beurre blanc is a white wine butter sauce. Um, it's a very classical sauce. Uh, you can make a beurre rouge, which is a red wine butter sauce. Um, and all it is is white wine vinegar, um, white wine vinegar, white wine, shallots. You let that reduce to about two ounces and then you start adding in your butter your whole butter and you're whisking it the whole time and you're getting an emulsion and um it's kind of you have that um 
you, you don't want to have that mm, that too much vinegar it's like uh, that face so you add the butter it balances it out now you can make a, a roasted red pepper beurre blanc a, a tarragon beurre blanc a pecan beurre blanc um, basil beurre blanc a citrus beurre blanc an orange beurre blanc and the list goes on and on and on so it, it's really a, a diverse sauce um, I used to do a lingonberry beurre blanc for uh, pan seared salmon beautiful dish with a, a, a pumpkin risotto it was beautiful with some asparagus loved it um, so but I love a beurre blanc because you know what you go into a kitchen nine times out of ten you can find you some white wine that you can find some sort of vinegar you know if I'm doing a beurre rouge it's red wine red wine vinegar you know shallots uh, if, if you go into a kitchen and they don't have shallots uh, in a restaurant uh, you don't want to be there <laughs> there's no reason to be there. that's just me <laughs> that's my uppity self and, and I can be uppity when it comes to food um, so you have your beurre rouge your beurre blanc um, and then so au sec means to reduce something au sec where it's almost dry au sec means almost dry um, nearly cooked out so it's just kind of and you've probably done it a million times you just didn't know what you were doing um, and there's how you have your your shallots you add your butter uh, and then you strain and it's a beautiful beurre blanc I uh, love it white wine butter sauce is what it is one of my faves um, thickening agents so you have thickening agents so your basic thickening agents um, in our kitchens is a roux so a roux again is equal parts of fat and flour by weight that is cooked all right so you got to cook it so you have a white roux a blonde roux and a brown roux um, the white roux uh, I will tell you this as you cook a roux it loses its thickening power um, and you'll start to get color if you burn a roux throw it away call it it's done I had um, I, I had a student once they had a beautiful sauce I was like oh my god it's a, it was a beautiful demi gloss and but it was really thin and I said oh you need to go add a roux to it and um, so they went they added the roux uh, and they brought it back to me so it was time for me to grate it and they brought it back to me 30 minutes later and I was like oh yeah this was a good sauce and oh the th it looks thick it looks nice and I took a big old spoonful mmm yeah and I went ah oh. I was like what'd you do you burn it and they literally burnt the roux and added the root the burnt roux to the sauce, and it ruined the sauce uh, so if you burn a roux uh, if you get any kind of color on it uh, when it sticks to the pan and you see it burning on the pan throw it away you're done um, you can't use it but as it cooks you so usually I take um, the roux I get it to peanut butter consistency and I start cooking I cook it for about three minutes and I get a white roux now while I'm cooking it's on low heat and I'm stirring okay now cook it for another two to three minutes and I get a blonde roux all right and then as I keep I keep cooking to get a brown roux I just cook it until I get the brown color all right and that's what you're going to taste it um, if, if there's and reading all y'all's research papers there are some Cajun people out there that love some Cajun food uh, you can do a black or a red uh, roux and that means you're cooking it for hours uh, and that's how you make gumbo you, you, it's your it's all about the roux all right um, but you got to sit there and you can't let it burn can't let it burn um, but I love a good roux so that is one way to thicken um, and there's your your ratios your portions um, and you guys will learn you know what I just add until I know um, but I will tell you this a roux does not instantly thicken something um, you, you got to add your liquid uh, you, you add your roux to your liquid and you know what it, it give it a few minutes um, it's not going to instantly boom it's thick no heat is what activates it and it comes together and it starts to thicken big one of the biggest things on bechamel day is when students uh, they will have their milk they add their roux and they just keep it they're like it's not thickening that's not and they don't give it a few minutes for it to activate and all of a sudden it all heats up and they've literally added a cup of roux to you know a quarter of bechamel and it's paste I can literally thick it throw it on the wall <laughs> so you know and it happens so you just add it and, and you start getting used to it um, but the other is so heat is what activates it um, and you just kind of got to give it some time all right and if you burn the roux throw it away um, cornstarch slurry so a, a slurry I literally take cornstarch I add water to it 
and I always use my hands, okay? And the reason why I use my hands to touch it and, and kind of mix it together is because I want it to coat my hands. So if you remember when you were a kid, you had paper mache, right? And it kind of coated your hands. That's what I want. So a slurry, what you do is you have a sauce um, and you thicken it. Uh, and usually this is something that I, if I need a quick thickener, um, if you make chutneys or Asian cooking, usually you know how the sauce is kind of kind of clear, um, it's shiny, it's not opaque, it's not cloudy where you can't see through it. That's what they use to slurry. Um, and so this is, I, I bring my liquid to a simmer and I add my slurry. If I'm doing a strawberry uh, coolie or a compote for a cheesecake, guess what? I, I add a slurry to it to thicken it up. Um, and then you let it cook for a few minutes and then boom, it's done. Um, but a slurry, you gotta have your liquid uh, simmering because you're instantly gonna see it thicken, okay? That's the nice thing with the slurry. Rue doesn't do that. Everybody thinks that does. Uh, and then you have a beurre manier. A beurre manier is cold butter and flour. You mix it together and you make little little balls, okay? And it's a finisher, so um, kind of Montel bears to mount with butter, right? Well here, if I need a little more thickness, I'm gonna add a little bourmanier. And a bourmanier gives me the whole butter and a little bit of flour, okay? You're not, add, you're not adding a baseball, you're adding little pea sizes. You're adding a few of them and that's it. Um, but that's what a bourmanier is and it's used at the finishing, okay? Uh, what else, finishing techniques. So you have a liaison. A liaison is heavy cream and egg yolk. So the one thing that I need you to understand is that it's very classical to use a liaison. Um, egg yolks are used to thicken. Uh, and what you do, it's kind of like you're adding heavy cream to the egg yolk, and it gives you what I to told you earlier, your eggs coagulate at 140 to 144 degrees. If you add a liquid to it, now it's 150, uh, 155. So now I have a, a, a little more temperature to play with. So when you're looking at a velouté, a French um, almonds, a, a French, uh, chef is always going to use um, a liaison at the end of their velutes uh, because it's just a thickener and it gives richness uh, because it's heavy cream and egg yolk. Now, can you just use heavy cream? Yes, you can. Um, the egg yolk makes it very temperamental. You got to be careful with it. Um, and again, it can't go above 155 degrees. So when you're looking at a pot, so let's talk about temperatures. When you're looking at a pot and a liquid, so a poaching temperature, if I wanna poach something, is 160 to 180 degrees, okay? So if I wanna poach a piece of shrimp, it's gentle cook, I mean, a, a, yeah, poke, uh, poaching a piece, piece of shrimp or a, a salmon, um, I'm gonna poach it 160 to 180 degrees. 185, um, Gee, I just totally lost myself. 185 to 205 is simmering, okay? And that's where you start to see movement in your pot and you're getting some reduction. And then boiling is 212. So you need to know those. You need to know that that poaching is a gentle cooking. Um, think about you go, you get into a bathtub and if the liquid is too hot, what happens to your muscles? They tense up, right? Oh, hot. Um, that's what happens to uh, a piece of salmon if I let my temperature get above 180 degrees. So that's why the gentle is the gentle cooking, the 160 to 180, I put it in there. You know, think about you take a nice bath, you get in there, what's it do? Your muscles relax. So does the salmon, it's a beautiful thing. Um, you, can, you can cook something in a liquid and overcook it and dry it out and make it tough. Yep, people do it all the time. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Gotta love it. All right, so there's our Monto Bear. And then we have other sauces, so a gravy. So everybody wants to be like, oh, an Espanol is a gravy. No, it's a sauce. Uh, so what's the difference between a gravy and a sauce? A gravy is this, I'm gonna tell you the secret of turkey gravy. All right, happy Thanksgiving, right? Merry Christmas, you're making some turkey gravy. Love it, it's my favorite thing, time of year. So I take my, my um, pan drippings. So anytime that you're making a gravy, you're using pan drippings. All right, everybody's like, oh, I didn't know that. It's pan drippings. So you take those pan drippings and you add stock to it. And you add the stock and you let it cook and then you add flour. So usually what I do is I take my pan and I'll pull, cause I'll, that's always way too much fat in it. And I'll strain off some of that fat, right? And then I'll literally take flour and sanjay to dust with flour, right? 
So I, and I'm in the pan, so my, my pan. And I literally start making a roux with it. And then I add my chicken stock. And I add a little kitchen bouquet um, that you can buy in the store. My mama taught me this one. Uh, and then uh, I add a little bit of thyme sprig, okay? Uh, you can add a little couple pieces of garlic if you want that. Uh, and I let it cook, all right? And I let that cook and my flavor, it, it's a quick sauce. It's not long because those pan drippings have so much flavor to it. Um, and I let it cook until I have the flavor I want, season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, and boom, you're in there. And that's a gravy. And it's a beautiful thing. Uh, now I want Thanksgiving. So, and then you strain it. So you're deglazing. So there's your roux, you strain. All right, a tomato, a coolie. So a coolie is a, so, is a sauce that's made of pureed fruits or vegetables, okay? So you can make a, I've made a tomato coolie, a strawberry coolie, uh, either one. Um, and all you're doing, you're just, you're cooking them and pureeing them, okay? Uh, and it's a beautiful sauce. I do a uh, roasted red pepper coolie for my crab cake. Um, I also do a roasted red pepper beurre blanc. Love it. Um, so you can, you can really play with that. Um, you can add your flavors. You know, if I do a tomato coolie, I can add in a little bit of basil if I want or some sage, uh, rosemary, however I want to do it. Um, cause you're just kind of sweating your, your vegetables. Uh, and then you puree it. Uh, and then if you want to do like a strawberry coolie, uh, I take my strawberries, I take a little bit of water, um, a little bit of sugar, uh, vanilla, and I let it cook with my strawberries. Uh, and then I puree it, and I, if I need to, I, if I need a little thickener that will kind of make it, I add a slurry, uh, and boom, I have a, a strawberry sauce for my cheesecake if I want. Or you can do it with blueberries or mixed berries, however you want to do it, but you can, you can do either side. So, turns out real nice. Um, contemporary sauces, you have salsas and relishes, um, and you guys will make those when you get into garmage. Uh, chutneys, I love a good uh, chutney. You can make a, a peach chutney, tomato chutney, um, mango, pineapple, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but it's a sweet and sour. You're using sugar and vinegar um, and all kinds of spices and all of that. Usually you use a, a slurry to thicken it up and you go from there. Um, so that's nice. Uh, oils, anytime you want to do uh, uh, flavored oils or vinegars, um, you can just do the, your, your emulsion um, and then just have your sauces are. All right. So that is sauces. That, that's a lot of sauce. Uh, but again, I love a sauce, and I promise you that to me, a sauce is what makes the whole dish. If you're, if if chicken's chicken, beef is beef, shrimp shrimp, uh, it's all about the sauce every day. Okay, so make it good and make it taste. And if it's not banging, it's not any good. So that's that's my that's my take on it. If I don't go, wow, I'm, if I'm not excited, my guest is not going to be excited either. You gotta remember that. If you're not excited about it, why would they be? Right? So it's all about the sauce. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.